Hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome back to another weekend recap of CSGO News. Not a lot of CSGO News happening this past weekend, but I hope you all enjoyed this last week of CSGO News videos. Uh, gonna be a few videos out this week, and I wanted to preface today's video by telling all of you next week is Thanksgiving break here in America. I'm gonna be home for the whole week, which actually means a lot more time to make video content for all of you. So please do me a favor, leave a comment down below what kind of videos you wanna see, whether it's a house tour, a CSGO News behind the scenes tour, or maybe a Q&A video with my sister finally. Whatever you guys wanna see, leave a comment down below. And as always, hope you all enjoy this episode of CSGO News. So first off, today's episode of CSK News, this past weekend we actually had a lot more information come out about Source 2. I'm sure many of you are aware of Source 2 eventually coming to CSGO sometime in the future. Many people out there not knowing the timeline of this. We've had several project leaders out there for the CSGO, the game itself, actually come forward and say, yes, we do want to do Source 2 eventually in the future, but the timeline has been undecided. And we actually had Valve themselves say in several statements earlier this year in 2017, around January and February, they came out and said a lot of their big goals this season or this year of CSGO was going to be community base. So all of, all of us wanting the UI stuff, UI panorama, a lot of anti-cheat stuff coming into play as well. That was actually not till a couple months ago. We can all probably agree earlier this year, anti-cheating was probably at its worst all the time. We had a lot of cheaters, a huge influx of cheaters also throughout the past few months. We've seen some increase though in those anti-cheat implementations over the past few months. I think they've done a great job at that, especially when you branch out to other areas as well, like Face It and ESCA. They've also done a lot in their part as well to actually avoid cheaters as much as possible. Now also, one of the bigger goals for 20 17, which people really weren't aware of at the start of the year, was branching out CSGO into other areas of the world, that being South America as well as the biggest branch out was in, of course, to China, Perfect World coming and buying out those rights to actually play the game in China. So as of right now, Valve has actually accomplished many of their goals throughout 2017, which means sometime in the near future, they might be able to focus on Source 2 itself. We actually had, thanks to the Valve News Network, I'll link their full video down below if you guys want full details about this, but very shortly, the current project leader for CSGO as of right now is a man by the name of Edu Magal and he actually said sometime in the near future hopefully or sometime in the long projected timeline he does expect Source 2 to come into CSGO but again there's really no no specific confirmation as to when that's going to be at the point of me actually recording this guys I could say it might be 2018 probably more likely 2019 of when Source 2 will actually come into CSGO but here's what Ido Magal the project leader of CSGO had to say about the topic of Source 2. Yeah so Source 2 um, which is in CSGO's future, um, probably every Valve's product uh, future, uh, that isn't already sourced to, um, is easier content creation. And, uh, so that, that, that is the long-term vision. Uh, Short-term vision is follow the user and the community um, along their interests. So to be quite honest with you guys, with all the accomplishments so far throughout 2017, I think a pretty decent year for CSGO, maybe one of the few fallbacks has been the rise in cheaters. Alongside that, I think ESL Pro League viewership being down because it's now on YouTube and not Twitch. I do want to say that Valve's done a great job throughout 2017. I have high hopes for 2018, but do I think Source 2 will come sometime in 2018 for C the main game of CSGO, not the Chinese? I think Chinese region is definitely more likely. Do I think it's going to come anytime soon in 2018? I think not. I think 2019 is a more accurate projection. We'll see though in the future what Valve has to say about this and we can only hope and pray right now that 2018 is the goal for Source 2 engines to come to CSGO. Now on top of that, even bigger news out there. For all you Dignitas fans, we have seen the downgrade of several teams throughout 2017. Several teams who have done relatively nothing throughout the year, whether it be not winning many tournaments or not making any big tournament appearances at all. And that being Team Dignitas is actually one of those teams out there. If you guys remember, they actually have not won any big events since late 2016 with the former North roster. That was the old guys over there. Ever since then, they have actually been winless, really done nothing with this new roster. I'm sure many of you guys are aware of that, and we haven't seen their names at any big tournaments ever since. So the past eight to nine months, even over the past year or so, with their older roster as well, the Dignitas organization, CSGO-wise, has done relatively nothing. They actually decided to release Asilian and Jakeem from the roster a couple days ago, and it now seems, based on HLTV articles, they will be releasing their entire CSGO roster. So the future of these players on screen and future new Dignitas members, we do not know as of right now. If Dignitas will actually sign a new roster. Many people out there thinking that Pimp, uh, for, I guess he's a, a current heroic stand-in player, former Liquid player, people thinking they were actually going to replace Asilian and Jakeem, but now it does seem they're going to drop the entire CSGO roster, so we'll see what their future does lie with. It's just kind of crazy to think about. Back in early to late 2016, we thought and we saw the rise of Dignitas. All of a sudden, that roster got bought up by North, and now the fall of the organization has begun. And speaking of falls of organizations, moving on to our next story in CSGO News, guys, I do want to talk about Immortals and the fall of this 
this team, which has been just kind of depressing to see. And I want you guys to comment down below what do you guys think about this. I will reply to your guys' comments and kind of want to share your thoughts about the situation of teams like Dignitas, like even a team like Immortals. It's kind of crazy to see when teams are doing well, all of a sudden they get bought out, they lose their teams. The organization itself obviously does struggle because uh, you have a good you have a good team. All of a sudden you decide to sell them, and then your new team can't compete with what your old team used to do. Or if you take the Immortal situation, I know I talk about this way too much in this channel, so I do apologize for that. But you have a particularly uh, a very very particular instance here because most teams, if they're doing well, they're eventually their rosters or the individual players will get bought out. We saw that with Dignitas, we saw that with Gambit Gaming and Zeus. Although Gambit is one of those rare teams who is still doing quite well after losing one of their primary members. Who knows what that will be in the future? We've seen it in the past with other teams as well. After you win big events and you lose players or actually a whole team entirely, the organization does struggle. But in this instance, for Immortals, we have losing players not based off performance or based off being bought out, but based off just not wanting to play for that organization. Of course, when I talk about Immortals, of course, they first lost KNG due to some, some up riots over there. The instance was CLG's FNS, and of course, that emotional toll he took on them led them to kick him out of the organization. Then shortly after losing Henny, alongside that, we also had losing his brother Lucas, and now even further down the line, they are now lost Bolts. This Immortals roster we are now seeing, I'll show it on screen for all of you, is a completely different roster than the Immortals roster we saw a month ago, which just goes to show how fast an organization CSGO team can actually really fall apart. Now on top of that as well, we've also seen even worse news for this team. They've now withdrawn from DreamHack Winter. This is actually one of the last or few tournaments out there that the old roster they had qualified for, but they could not actually, of course, show up with a majority of that roster. Therefore, they can't retain that spot. So they had Henny, KNG, and Lucas qualify for DreamHack Winter with Steel and Bolts. Now the majority of that team is no longer there. They can't compete with that spot. So Renegades is actually going to replace them in the tournament. So more bad news coming fast for Team Immortals, and I really can't see a high hope for this team in the future. They have now kind of gone down in the books as an Immortals roster who was once top 10, and now they're like any other Brazilian roster out there. You have SK Gaming, who is now far, far and above everyone else, and now it feels like it's almost a Tempo Storm-like roster on this new Immortals roster as well. A lower tier Brazilian team for sure. They've definitely been downgraded uh, by, a long, by a landslide in my own opinion. And then just to add to their struggles, of course, they are trying to sell their current members. So yes, they will get an influx of money for those three players, whoever they do go to, which right now is projected to be Cleveland Cavaliers and Nade Shot running the operations there to buy them out for anywhere from 600000 to a million dollars. But besides that, we're seeing the fall of a big CSGO organization, and I'm curious to see what you guys think. Will Immortals bounce back? Will they actually bring these new members, ZQK, SHZ, uh, Horvy? Will Steel lead these guys into actually being tier one pro players, eventually wait on the line? Can they actually afford to play these guys and have this solid roster for a good amount of time to the act for they can actually progress to that level? Leave a comment down below what you guys think. That's going to do it for today's episode of CSGO News. Please stay tuned for tomorrow's episode, though, guys. We have a lot more stories saved up for tomorrow. Should be a lengthier episode for all of you to watch. If you guys did enjoy, leave a comment down below. More importantly, leave a like if you guys if you guys want to. If you really don't have, you know what? I don't. Please.